And now we'll have Brother Trevor come up and give us our afternoon presentation. Please be blessed. Thank you, Sister Kachita, and welcome, brethren. Uh, I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy to see all of you who are here. Very happy, and um, hope it will be a blessing to everyone. Our subject is Davidian Life Standards from a Different Direction. Uh, before we have a word of prayer, I want to encourage everyone to uh, always be uh, looking out how you can be the Lord's hands. Um, the Lord did help Sister Colette with the phone, but how? Did he send an angel? He sent a, 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 there was a Christian, a, a good person, someone who was, didn't steal the phone, if I understood, and I didn't hear clear, sorry, uh, uh, probably need to do something about that eventually, maybe get some AI enhanced augment, aug augmented hearing here eventually. But, um, uh, but that uh, lady, was doing a good deed and she was also doing um, uh, what we all do as Christians. We help each other and that is how the Lord helps us many times. Uh, uh, many people would like it, maybe they prefer if the Lord sent an angel, but what he does is even more wonderful. He inspires some human being to be his hands and we are his hands. If we don't do things, we are told that uh, those things are not going to be done. And that's not only for the work of saving people, that's also for the work of saving people's lost phones. If there wasn't a Christian in that spot at that time to do the Lord's work, it wouldn't have been done, despite the earnest prayers and hopes uh, of, the, of anyone uh, because the Lord is a, a, in general and, and, and uh, as, a, uh, uh, as a, a general thing, uh, this is the day-to-day -day reality, brethren, and if you, you do ha need to understand this, do not go into a mystical, supernatural thing where you insist that it must be an angel when it is a human being doing the Lord's work as we are to do. And that is what we are to do ourselves. Now, all around us, there are people in need, especially uh, right here, everywhere uh, in the foreign fields. It is necessary for us to be the Lord's hands. We, we are the people that he has to help to do things. We, we have a broader responsibility. Christianity means more than what a lot of people take it to mean. Much more, as we've been uh, talking about. But um, it, we have obligations to our neighbors. We have uh, obligations to uh, our, our, uh, our fellow man, uh, uh, to society as a whole. And we have a special obligation to those in the household of faith. Uh, it, uh, a sister in the Philippines has mentioned to me, and I, I, I've been thinking about her situation even though I did not uh, get back to her yet. Uh, she is a new sister from Mountaindale, and she's undergoing some persecution from her family. And this is... Uh, not right. It is a very wrong thing. What would you do if your family member became a Mountaindale believer? Would you persecute her? You shouldn't. If you're a Davidian, indeed, you believe in the beautiful principles of religious liberty and you practice them. It is very wrong to uh, trouble someone because of their religious beliefs. 
very, very much a wrong thing. And learn that lesson from this uh, example, which is a real life example right now. A, a very new sister is uh, being troubled and, and persecuted to a degree. I don't know how much, but, but it's enough to trouble her uh, and, and make her sad. And it's wrong. Now, those who are, know about this or should know about this, they are the hands of the Lord in this situation to strengthen her, encourage her, and maybe give her some uh, um, uh, tips and advice uh, on how she can reduce the prejudice and, and, um, and the um, offense that they have. But remember, the, the, the right procedure for us, of course, is to turn the other cheek. Be kind uh, when they are hard and strong, you are kind and Christ-like. And uh, uh, if you are do this in a right spirit, not in a holier-than-thou spirit, but just in a kind, uh, everyday spirit, without making a, a, any special production of it, you will uh, have a little effect of wearing away the prejudice and the animosity. But this should not be among Davidians, but there is much religious prejudice and intolerance among Davidians. In fact, uh, practically speaking, there's more intolerance and prejudice among Davidians uh, than among many other people for different groups and so on. That should never be for us, brethren. Remember that. Uh, your best friend uh, uh, becomes a uh, Mountain Dale or Waco brother what is, uh, or sister, what is your response? Well, I'm, I'm praying for you and you, I, I'm, you're still my friend, you're still my, uh, my wife, my husband, my daughter, my son, and so on. And you go forward by uh, uh, being kind and understanding and loving, you will uh, win a, 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 a uh, um, there, uh, a chance to uh, have an effect on them. Whereas if you're hard and abusive and intolerant, you close the door. You definitely won't have a chance. And you give them a lot of a holier than thou lecture and talk and that will also close the door and prejudice their mind. So uh, remember that as Davidians, we uh, we believe and we practice what Brother Adolf called the beautiful uh, 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 principle of religious liberty. That is a, that is a thing. And I hope that, um, that um, her family will um, not persecute her too much. And I hope that you, brethren, who may be able to encourage her, do so. All right, uh, with that, uh, and remember, we are the Lord's hands. We are the way that he does things. Everyone wants supernatural miracles dropping out of the sky, but he has done something more wonderful than that. He has made us his agents here on this world to do these things. And we must do them too. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you that we have this chance once again to come before thee. We thank you for the chance that we have to be part of this, uh, this uh, message and part of Bashan, where we uh, believe and practice all the things that the message teaches. And we pray that... Uh, you will be uh, with this sister in a special way, that you will encourage her, and uh, that you will touch the hearts of her family as well. Uh, we pray not only for her, but we pray for all the many other people, uh, both in the household of faith and out, who have uh, many, many uh, ter terrible problems in and difficult situations that you will watch over them, that you will comfort their hearts, and that you will bless each and every one of them in the best way uh, the, uh, uh, for each of them. We pray that 
we will continue to be steadfast in the faith, that we will um, continue to uh, move forward in our, our spiritual life, that we will grow uh, stronger uh, in, in, uh, in grace uh, that, and in the truth, and that you'll be able to use us uh, to do the work that you have given us to do. We pray that the things that we hear today will be a blessing to us all in, in some way. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So our opening thought, this is, uh, I really intended it to be my prayer thought, but then I got um, uh, sidetracked uh, uh, because I was, uh, I had that sister on my mind uh, for several days actually. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, Ephesians 6.10. True Christianity will always be aggressive and wherever it exists, it will arouse enmity. All who live a conscientious life, who bear a testimony of the claims of God, of the evil of sin, of the judgment to come, will be called disturbers of Israel. Those whose testimony awakens apprehension of the soul uh, offend pride and arouse opposition. The hatred of evil against good exists as surely now as in the days of Christ, when the multitudes cried, away with this man, release unto us Barabbas. There's no kind of evil in our world, but that some have an interest in maintaining it. Evil is ever warring with good. And we stand for the good, and therefore uh, evil is at war with us. And since we know that the conflict with the Prince of Darkness is constant and must be severe, let us be united in the warfare. Cease to war against those of your own faith. Let no one help Satan in his work. We have all that we can do in another direction. Wherever we stand for the right, there will be opposition. And uh, it is our duty, brethren, uh, our duty is wider and, uh, and uh, more um, pressing than we understand right now, but it is our duty to oppose evil. It is our duty to stand for the right. It is our duty to speak up for the right. A, uh, a, uh, a person, uh, who is uh, um, a scientist, engineer in uh, robotics, and uh, uh, trying to start a new co robot robotics company. They have a ton of them being started up, who follows me on, on Twitter, uh, saw, uh, and he is very concerned about AI too, uh, advanced AI. Uh, there's two different things there between the uh, useful robots and dangerous AI. But, um, He's seen what I've said and, and agree, I think, in at least to one degree or another. But he said uh, last week, uh, um, uh, the, um, something to the effect to me uh, that um, the watchmen are dumb. And uh, he quoted the verse, uh, a paraphrase the verse, the watchmen are dumb and, uh, and do not uh, raise their voices because uh, he saw I was speaking against the, these things, but most people are not. They're not, they're holding back. It was interesting to me for him to say that. Uh, but, um, and he wanted to be very careful to not to be judgmental or anything, but that's what he thought. And um, it is, um, it is true, the churches are holding back their voices on many things, not just AI and so on. Many, many things, the churches of the world and the, and the churches of Laodicea, they hold back their voices, they are dumb. They do not, they are not, they are watchmen who uh, cannot raise the alarm and do not warn the people. 
Our job is to uh, be faithful watchmen on the walls, whatever the situation is. And it's our job to oppose um, uh, evil in, in whatever way is necessary. That's our opening thought, but our main uh, point is uh, how we can, of course, live uh, a Davidian life uh, better. What does it mean? A mere assent to the truth will never save a soul from death. We must be sanctified through the truth. Every defect of character must be overcome or it will overcome us and become a controlling power for evil. Most of our defects and weaknesses must be overcome, brethren. Some of our defects must be overcome. A few of our defects are, uh, must be overcome. None of the above. Every defect. Every defect. Let no one say, I cannot overcome my defects of character, for if this is your decision, then you cannot have eternal life. Don't think that you'll be laid away because you uh, are too weak to uh, start in on the defects of your, uh, your character and still be resurrected with the, uh, in the special resurrection. Let no one say, I cannot overcome my defects of char uh, character. For, it is, for if this is your decision, then you cannot have eternal life. The impossibility is all in your will. If you will not, that constitutes the cannot, and that is the sin that you will be judged for. You would not try. You would not put it in your mind honestly and truly to try. Now, if you do, by the way, with the help of the Lord, uh, will he fail you? He will not fail you. But if you don't truly make that decision, then you won't have the help of the Lord and you won't overcome. And, you, and it's no use, you, you can fool yourself, but you can't fool the Lord. He knows if you're serious, if you really are going to uh, go all out in doing these things. Every defect, brother. This is such a wide, uh, sweeping uh, um, category here. There's nothing in our life that it doesn't include that is not uh, fitting for heaven. And there is a lot of things in our life that is not fitting for heaven. Every weakness, every defect, everything that we could do something about, if we can do something about it, our health, our mental health, uh, our life, our work, our habits, or whatever, and we don't do it, we are judged as not willing to do it. And it's sad because there's a lot of people in this category who are going to go into eternity uh, uh, on the surface wanting to be a Christian, going through the motions of being a Christian, but not going all out and actually committing the will uh, uh, completely and truly to do the things that the Lord has asked us to do. Now this is a, from a, Adventist youth uh, uh, by uh, um, Sister White quoted it from a book called How to Be a Man. The neat, orderly, and careful boy has an invariable rule, a place for everything and everything in its place. Go into his room at any hour and you will find everything in order. He can go in the dark and lay his hands upon every, anything he wants so that he never runs the risk of setting the house on fire by carrying a light into his bedroom. He never leaves a thing at random where he happens to be using it, but always puts it where it belongs. Now, this is how we need to uh, see the children. This is how the children need to be trained. We need to already be doing this. It's already a requirement for us, brethren. All of these things are, are baked into the message already. They're part of the message, part of the spirit of prophecy, and they come from the Bible. 
all these principles of diligence, carefulness, conscientiousness, it is necessary for us to, do, to live our life in this way. And this is the way uh, the, uh, of the Davidian field worker, and we want it to be the way of the uh, Davidian indeed, too. Everything in order, uh, everything careful, everything precise, uh, a diligent, conscientious practice of all the requirements that we have to do. Everything uh, is put where it belongs, not only physically, but in your life. Everything is put away in your life. Everything is being done in your life that needs to be done. When he undresses, every article of his clothing is folded and laid together in the order that it will be wanted in the morning, so that he loses no time in hunting for it. He is equally careful in his person. He never considers himself dressed till he has washed his hands and his face, cleaned his teeth, combed his hair, and never thinks of sitting down to the table with dirty hands. He learns to keep his clothes neat and clean. This is self-care, conscientious self-care, meticulous uh, self-care. He never forgets to use the scraper at the door to remove the mud from his feet, and he makes it an invariable rule never to pass a mat without wiping his shoes. <laughs> Yes, but there's a larger lesson from this for us adults, okay? This is the lesson. He never says, like the sloven, I didn't think to excuse himself. Don't say it. Uh, you, uh, don't think it. Uh, what you want to think is, how can I uh, make this a habit in the future going forward? I, I messed up, I forgot, and so on. Yes, I did, but to yourself, uh, but you, um, because you have to face it. If you, if you can't face your errors, you can't repair your errors. You can't, uh, uh, you can't grow. A lot of people are like that. They don't face their errors. They don't acknowledge any errors in their life, and so they stay with their errors just the way they are. It's one of the worst things that can happen to a person if they... I was like, nope, nothing's wrong. I, everything I'm, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do and, and so on. Uh, they don't see themselves when they make mistakes and, and so they don't, they don't have insight, self-insight or, or awareness. And they, uh, those people, uh, it's almost impossible uh, for them to ever change because they don't need to. They don't think they need to. He never says, like the sloven, uh, uh, I didn't think to excuse himself. He would consider unpardonable in him not to think, for what is the ability of thinking worth if it never comes when it is wanted? We don't have the excuse of saying, not deep, not truly with the Lord. I didn't think about it, Lord, sorry. I didn't see you there hungry at the side of the road or naked and so on. I didn't think about it. We don't have that excuse with God on anything, big things or little things. The neat orderly boy makes, uh, the neat orderly boy makes himself agreeable to his mother or garden and guardian and friends who are always glad to see him coming home. And home is a delightful place for him because he meets with smiles and, and pleasant words. But the sloven exposes himself to sour looks and chiding by his dirty habits and he finds home a disagreeable place because he makes it so in his own particular little sphere, uh, uh, his activities. It is a lesson for us adults that if we make ourselves agreeable to our family and friends, we will be met with smiles 
Uh, they'll be happy to see us. They'll be happy to be around us. And this is a, 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 a basic principle for us Davidians. We are always agreeable and pleasant. Almost a complete philosophy for, the six, for success in life, this uh, uh, couple of paragraphs uh, Sister White quoted in a letter to her boys. It's taken from Adventist Youth, page 72. And it is a requirement for us to do these things. It is a defect when we don't do it. Every time we don't do the things the Lord has laid out for us, that's a defect, a weakness, and a sin. So, a place for everything. Everything must be in its place in our life, uh, in our workplace. If we, if we leave things out of place, random, helter-skelter, it's hard to find things, things get lost and broken. Um, it, it, it is necessary for us to put things in their place uh, faithfully and without delay when we finish with them. At night, we fold our clothes. In the morning, uh, we fold our clothes, our night clothes, uh, uh, unless they are uh, they, they're put to the wash at night. But the point is, uh, everything is neat and orderly. Now these are little things, okay? Trivial little things that the angels no doubt overlook and the Lord overlooks too in your mind. <laughs> You're right, Sister Alice said, the angels don't overlook it. Uh, but we overlook it, okay? We overlook it and uh, we don't think too much about it many times. Everything needs to be precise. Everything needs to be done correctly, all the time, right away, not a week later or even a day later. So everything in its place, number two, always puts things in their place when you're done. And this is a great secret in keeping your place organized and neat. It's no big cleanup on Friday, no big cleanup at the end of the day. It's rewind everything when you're done. When you're done with it, rewind. And not a little bit later, not five minutes later, just right then. You take out something, you put it back when you're done. Not when you're half done, by the way, that would waste time. But when you're done, you put it away. Number three, meticulous in self-care. Now. Uh, for the children, they have to scrub their face and wash their hands and so on. For us, we have to do the same, but self-care involves more for us. Self-care involves um, taking our vitamins. It's a defect and a sin not to be taking uh, the things that you have opportunity to take. If you have opportunity to take nutritional supplements, uh, we have talked about this before. Not everybody has an opportunity, something I think about, by the way. Uh, uh, and I, uh, I wish you would think about it. You have a privilege to take these things here in this country. Why do we need to take these things? Do we live in Eden? We don't live in Eden. And do we live in the pre-flood days when the soil was fertile and, and deep? No, we live in a, a post-diluvian world where the flood washed away all the good things, the nutrients in the soil, to a large degree. The trees are stunted today, just like the uh, people are compared to Adam and Eve, because the soil is not so good. Even scientists know that in the fossil record, the plants and animals were bigger uh, in the pre-diluvian days. But we can compensate partly, and we're required to do this uh, because of the devitalized food that we're still eating uh, to a certain extent and the devitalized soil that the food is growing in. We're, we're, we're able to compensate 
partly for this uh, with uh, nutritional supplements uh, 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 under certain circumstances. And remember that uh, in other countries where they don't use chemicals and so on like uh, fertilizers and, and, uh, and so on as they do here, hybrid uh, grain and, and so on, uh, uh, the food is more nutritious naturally. So the Lord has, uh, uh, has, has given the other pe people in other countries uh, some uh, uh, blessings that we don't have. Um, anyway, uh, self-care. It is necessary to take your supplements religiously to eat a balanced diet. Every Davidian needs to know how much uh, uh, food they need and what kind of food they need. And if you don't know, you're not up to uh, Davidian indeed standards. And you thought, well, I didn't need to know that. I'm not a scientist. No, you're a Davidian. You need to know basic things about what's going in your mouth and building your blood and your muscles. You need to learn. And it's not that hard. It's not that hard. A few hours, a, a few days, a week or two, and you will learn. You will learn, and if you can't remember, uh, keep learning, keep studying until you do remember. And you kn know what is the food that you're eating and how much you need, how much protein you need. Uh, <coughs> that's self-care, brethren, and that's a religious duty of every Davidian. The reason it is is that to have a, the highest development spiritually, we have to have a healthy body. Uh, the health reform message was given for spiritual reasons. Uh, many times when uh, Sister White talks about health reform and other people talk about health reform, we talk about what's in it for you, your heart attacks that you're going to not have and your cancer and so on. But the real reason is your spiritual health. Yes, it does bless you, help you with physical health to a certain degree when done wisely and knowledgeably, but the great benefit is spiritual health. You cannot have the greatest uh, uh, spiritual health when you have uh, different problems that we bring upon ourselves. Uh, you will not be able to uh, enjoy spiritual health and you will not be able to serve the Lord either when you have these problems in the same way. And so you have a responsibility for, to, to keep your uh, health uh, in the highest state that is possible for you, not for other people. We don't, we're not in competition with each other, but we're in competition with ourselves to do the very best we can do for ourselves uh, and, and to keep ourselves strong and fit to serve the Lord, healthy. So that's what it means uh, to have self-care. Uh, it means more than that, too. Uh, uh, we need to exercise. Uh, it, you may not have thought about exercise as a religious duty. You don't think that uh, 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 skipping your exercise periods is a sin, but it is. Yes, it is, brethren. The Lord has asked you to be a strong, and, and healthy and vigorous as possible. He wants you to be like this for your own benefit, for your own blessing. And when you skip your exercise uh, 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 period, um, you are, that is a weakness. You don't get a blessing for being weak. You don't get a blessing for your defects. They are counted as sin. And you said, I didn't know that. You should know that. You know that the Lord has asked us to walk if we're able to walk, exercise if we're able to exercise. We are to do things uh, to keep as strong as possible. Everyone, no one is exempt. And, and for those who do uh, take their uh, exercise classes um, um, casually, brethren, that is a defect, a serious defect. Uh, your personal exercise, too. <clears throat> Davidians are called to be a strong, uh, uh, vigorous people. 
You thought that was just talk? It comes from meticulous self-care and the way that the spirit of prophecy has lined out. All these things about the physical, do not neglect the physical uh, by any means and so on, the statements from the spirit of prophecy, those, that's what the teaching is. You do spiritual exercises, you do physical exercises. Now there's some people who do hard physical work and that will give them a great deal of exercise, but there's still exercises that you need to do. Stretching exercises, for instance, special strength exercises. Uh, physical work is very beneficial for cardiovascular conditioning. Uh, and you don't need to walk if you're walking all day. But there are, spe there are exercises for everyone to do. And even if you're in bed and bedridden, you can exercise, and you should. Unless the doctor tells you don't, you, sh you must. This is the Davidian way. Diligent in everything in general, whatever we do. Diligent in everything we do. We don't have a slovenly, uh, lackadaisical way of doing it. It's a sin, by the way. We'll come to that statement. But you, we should know by now that it is a sin. We don't get the chance to do things in, a, in that way, in a lackadaisical way. We have to do things diligently, whatever we're pu we put our hands to. Self-aware, thinks ahead. Now this is where the boy is not able to say, I didn't think. And for us, it's mo far more uh, um, uh, applicable. The boy could have an excuse, I'm just a boy. But we're adult Davidians. I didn't think, sorry but you're an adult Davidian. We don't get that choice, a chance to say, I didn't think. No, we have to train ourselves to always think, to always be self-aware, always think ahead. Think of the consequences, think of what you need to do, what you're going to need to do uh, uh, in the next steps, okay? Think ahead, be aware of these things. Don't come to the point where, well, I didn't think about it, but I needed this and I don't have it. Can't do that, brethren. It's a do, that's a defect when you run out of whatever you need because you did not think. It's, you think that's an excuse, but it's actually a, 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 an acknowledgement of guilt to the Lord when we don't think. And then we have to take time to get whatever it was because we did not think ahead. Number six, for a Christian, this is very important, and we know this, and I trust that every Davidian understands that we must always be agreeable and pleasant. Not just sometimes, always. Always we are agreeable and pleasant. This is the Christ-like way of behaving. And we make our friends and family happy. They're happy to see us because they always have a happy time with us. They're blessed by us. And that's our job. That's a requirement. If you are not agreeable and pleasant at all times, that is a defect. It is written down as a sin. And you thought, oh, well, you know, I just, I wasn't really that bad or anything. You weren't agreeable and pleasant. You didn't make other people happy. If we're not making people happy, what are we doing? Now, that doesn't mean that um, you have to uh, ignore sin and so on. But when you, when you see something that has to be said, you say it in a way that is not angry and disagreeable and uh, negative. And it's been found that critical, hard rebukes have less good effect in general than positive um, um, uh, encouragement. Point out the problem and encourage and lift up people. And uh, overall, most people respond uh, to that better uh, 
in the short and long term, brethren, it is the better way, and it's also the Lord's way. So it's almost a complete philosophy and a couple of paragraphs there in the letter to her sons. And this is the Davidian mindset. This is how we have to think all the time, everything, everything we do. When we give ourselves unreservedly to the Lord, the simple commonplace duties of home life will be seen in their true importance. And we will perform them in accordance with the will of God. What is his will and, and how we are to perform all our duties? We are to be vigilant, watching for the coming of the Son of Man. And we must also be diligent, working as well as waiting is required. There must be a union of the two. This will balance the Christian character, making it well-developed, symmetrical. Now, there's many people who uh, want to praise the Lord, but they're weak at doing things. They're weak at work, being diligent, conscientious workers in their private life. But praise the Lord, brother. They, they have a, a, a desire for the religious side, but they don't have that same a taste for the practical side of life. But we are to do everything we do as if uh, it was done unto the Lord. It's a religious duty to do all our work as if it was done unto the Lord. We should not feel that we are to neglect everything else and give ourselves up to meditation, study, or prayer. Now, we're not to neglect meditation, and study, and prayer, brethren, but we're not to retire to a Davidian monastery either and spend all our time doing that. And if we think we can just retire and do nothing, that is a mistake too. We're not to do that. We, we, we have an active life. Everyone is called on in one way or another to have an active life. Neither are we to, uh, uh, neither are we to be full of bustle and hurry and work to the ne neglect of personal piety. Waiting and watching and working are to be blended, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. It's all to come together. It's all together. This is the Davidian life. It all comes, it, uh, we blend it together uh, uh, in the way the Lord has laid out here. The race is not always to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Yet he shall become poor that dealeth with a slack hand. Proverbs 4, uh, sorry, Proverbs 10, 4. Those who are diligent in business may not always be prospered, but drowsiness and idleness are sure to grieve the Spirit of God and destroy true godliness. Now, what Sister White is saying that those who are diligent, sometimes your business fails no matter what. There could be business conditions, there could be difficulties in, in your customers, different problems, and um, maybe your business, uh, even though you work really hard, it may not prosper. But drowsiness and idleness are sure to grieve the Spirit of God. That's a slack hand. If we do work with a slack hand, brethren, it, the drowsiness and idleness are sure to gr grieve the Spirit of God and destroy true godliness. They will have the semblance of godliness, praise the Lord, but they don't have the true uh, um, uh, inner godliness. They're, they don't have it. And it's, it is something that is not so uncommon, brethren, because you have people who are drowsy and idle Davidians can never be drowsy and idle. They always have to be busy. Uh, if you thought you could relax and not do anything, you're not a Davidian. It's okay, not everybody uh, is a Davidian, and we're not, we believe in the beautiful principles of religious liberty. You can be drowsy and idle. We're not going to abuse you. But a Davidian is always busy. He's always doing something either spiritual uh, 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 um, activity, exercises, or he's doing physical uh, uh, things, uh, 
business, work, and so on. This is the way of Davidians. This is real, this is practical life for a Davidian. It is our duty to be fast and efficient at whatever we are doing. Let those who are naturally slow of movement seek to become active, quick, energetic. If you're under the control of slow, dilatory movements, if your habits are of a lazy order, you will make a long job out of a short one. It is the duty of those who are slow to reform and become more expeditious. If it's our duty and we don't do it, then it is a weakness and a defect and a sin. It is a duty, brethren to be the very best workers at what we do. And it is to, uh, our duty to study how to be active, quick, energetic, and efficient. That doesn't mean just running and scurrying back and forth. That would not be efficient. Uh, it is our duty to plan our movements in such a way that we do everything necessary at one point. Uh, don't walk over here and then remember that you forgot to bring something there. Think about things and work efficiently. Get everything together. See how you can do uh, everything with the minimum of, of uh, wasted movements, uh, moving uh, quickly and efficiently and safely. And this is a standard for us as Davidians. In anything, in our personal life, when you get dressed, and you say, well, getting pretty trivial there, Brother Trevor. Uh, maybe God will give you a, a break for being um, uh, naturally slow of movement and getting dressed and, uh, in a lazy uh, uh, way, a dilatory way. But I don't think so. Honestly, I don't think so. No, he is not going to give us a break. Whatever we do needs to be done uh, in the most efficient way that is possible. And we, we need to pay attention to the time. We need to do a good job in what we're doing, but we need to do it uh, 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 toward moving, just uh, getting it done as quickly as it's possible to do. And it's possible to do things f much, much uh, faster than we're used to, much. And that's one of the uh, things that we need to do, brethren. Be self-aware, acknowledge to yourself that there is room for improvement. Because if you think you're already living your life as efficient as you can, doing everything as good as you can, then there's nothing you can do about getting better, right? And there's nothing you can literally do. You're going to be stuck with your slow, dilatory habits. And they are slow compared to what they should be. Even if we're fast now, we can be faster by uh, learning to be efficient, not forgetting things. Uh, uh, learning to work with both hands, as it were. Uh, and there's much, much we can do in the way of, uh, of being efficient. There's a branch of study called time motion studies. Uh, they go into factories and they analyze the way that the people are standing, they're moving, and so on. And then they have suggestions of how these people can accomplish their work uh, faster, sometimes quite a bit faster and safer. And, and that's how we, ha we have to become time motion specialists in our daily life, in everything that we do. This is our closing thought the life of the Davidian field worker, and we want to commend this to every Davidian indeed. There must be a combination of meditation and diligent work. This is what Brother, uh, Sister White says. And there must. This is what, this is the secret of the, 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 the true successful Davidian field worker and a Davidian um, uh, indeed. Our life is a life of duty, discipline, and diligence, and hard work. That's what our life is about. And continuous spiritual growth through prayer, meditation, study, and good works. 
That's our life. And you think, well, I just do prayer and uh, you know meditation, or I do prayer and study, but you don't do good works. Your faith is dead. You, we do have to have good works, or the, 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 the tree is barren. And so uh, uh, the life of a field worker is one of intense spiritual growth through prayer, meditation, study, and good works. That is our life. It's a good life, brethren. It's a good thing. And it's a good way of life. And I commend it to every uh, Davidian uh, uh, who is listening, watching. It is the way that we should be. Duty, discipline, diligence, hard work, and continuous spiritual growth, brethren. That's what the Lord is looking for. The people that he is looking for are going to be people who are doing this every day in a systematic way, not hodgepodge now and then. I forgot. Uh, they're going to be doing this faithfully. They have a habit, a schedule, and they do things in a certain way. And one of the good things about habits, when you habitually do uh, things, uh, you can get very fast at doing it. When you're doing the same old thing over and over, you can get very fast, very good at it. The other thing about habits that are so wonderful, brethren, just to mention it, is that it offloads it from your, uh, your main conscious mind to a certain degree. It puts it on automatic. You don't have to really work hard to get going, and you don't have to work hard with willpower to keep going. You got a habit going, or taking you through it, and uh, it, you just cruise through that particular sequence. It's, it's a very uh, beneficial thing. Uh, make habits, uh, routines, out of all, every segment of your life and uh, be faithful with them. The, this is what we are called on to do, to be faithful and to practice these things. We're not in the stage now to talk and say, you must do this, uh, you, must be, um, you must be good, you must be kind, you must be diligent and, and, con and, and uh, conscientious and so on. Yes, that's important, but it's more than just exhorting people. Now is the time to uh, actually get down to the nuts and bolts of training ourselves. We have to train ourselves, no one can train us, but we have to get down to the nuts and bolts of training ourselves in these things. Thank you, brethren. God bless you all. Our Father in heaven, we come to you this afternoon with thankful and grateful hearts, not only for you sparing our lives, but you have called each one of us to be here in your Davidian last mile pastoral relation. And this evening, through Joe Porter, you have given us some marching orders. He was telling us to have this Davidian mindset. We are to have a duty and do our duty to your name's honor and glory. And not only in doing that duty, we are to be faithful in our everyday life. And in everything that you've given us, we have to have dis discipline. And we have to have the prayer, the meditation, the Bible study, and the meditation that we can remember these things and that they will be put into practice, not only for this day, but each and every moment of each of our days. So we thank you, Father, for your thoughts of us. They were thoughts of peace and you've given us another day of life to make things right with you and with one another. So we thank you, Father. And as we go through the rest of this Sabbath, let us remember these things and let us just ponder them in our hearts that they will be become an everyday habit, not just a habit, but we just carrying out your will. Just like Enoch, he said his will and thoughts will submerge into yours, and that's where we want to be. Because if they are submerged into yours, we're going to be like you. We're going to represent you fully in our thoughts, our words, our motives, our intents, our purposes. So please help us, Father. And we're asking not because we're worthy, but we're asking in Jesus' name. And we thank you for your call and your choosing us to be here. And we surrender our lives to your keeping for the rest of this day. And we thank you.
Amen. Thank you, everyone. And thank you to all of those who are on Zoom and the other media for joining us today. And we hope you continue to enjoy your day and we still have our Sabbath here. You may be dismissed.